Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to No Man's Sky, shall we? We're still on our starter planet, and we are standing next to our ship. You can see that the quest the game wants us to do is to seek answers among the stars. And our toxic protection is falling, so let me talk to you inside the cockpit of our ship. Remember, whenever you get in your ship, you get your oxygen and you get your well i guess i shouldn't say you get your oxygen you just won't lose oxygen and your hazard protection uh, will recharge because you are protected from the environment inside your ship now some things that we can do for fun if we want i just pushed the middle button on the controller uh, you know if we go over we can rename as i showed you we can rename animals, upload our discoveries, but you can rename everything in the game. So, you know, if you get a particularly good multi-tool, you can do that. Now, we haven't looked at this, but over here on the right portion of our multi-tool, you can see that it's a C-class multi-tool. And here is its damage and scanner range. And these are like ratings out of, uh, you know, potential ceiling. So you could see we're like in the bottom, you know, 15%, 18% on damage and scanner range. So our multi-tool is not very strong. And of course we want to upgrade this as we go, but for now it's just fine. Additionally, you would like a multi-tool that has even more available technology slots for us to put upgrades and all kinds of fun things. But if you click this pencil, you can indeed rename this, right? So if you want to name it, you know, the incompetent... Um, multi you know why not right so i'll name it that and we're done and there it goes your starship the radiant pillar you can rename that too you could see you can rotate your starship's picture with the right stick as you're looking at it um, and i got to this from the tab by pushing l1 and r1 to change to the starship tab you could change the name of it you could see its damage potential its shield strength its hyperdrive range and its maneuverability and all of these can be boosted by installing new items here into our technology as well as i believe this is influenced by the type of the ship that you have and this is our cargo space which is pretty robust but you can even get more cargo than this uh, on larger and larger ships so of course we'd like another ship but right now we're just so happy to have a ship that I'm gonna, we're going to be sticking with this for a bit. Upgrading a ship and your multi-tool is something that, if you know what you're doing, you could potentially do it quickly, uh, but it's not a rush. Right now, we're just going to be learning the game and doing other stuff, and these things will come as they, uh, as they ab arise. Now, you can get new ships, for example, in this game by just having enough money and buying a ship from someone that you, some alien that you see that has a ship, uh, either in a space station or on a planet, or you can find a crashed ship and repair it. There's ways to get ships. Uh, we'll just call this uh, the incompetent starter ship. There we go. Done. And our exosuit you cannot rename, um, but we can upgrade this further to have more inventory slots uh, through a process that we'll demonstrate in a bit. And now we have a renamed ship and multi-tool. Now, these are just some of the fun customizable things that you can do if you want, you know. Um, by the way, you see how in the technology slots I have my jetpack, I have my hazard protection, and I have my life support. Uh, you can actually push square to move these around and so like and you can reinsert them with x so i could put them all on this top row of technology if i if i want you could do the same thing with your inventory kind of shuffle things around however you'd like but even though we could stay on this planet and explore to our heart's content what we actually want to do is take off and i'm going to hold down r2 and begin to take off. Now we have no more launch thruster as you can see, so we're gonna have to recharge the launch thruster if we wanna take off again once we land. 
but I'm going to actually point my ship straight up to the stars as it's saying. I'm going to hold R2, and I'm going to hold circle and just blast us off. And you can see we're leaving the atmosphere. And now we're in the Euclid galaxy in the Yorozovec system. And if I look around with the left stick with our ship, you could see one of my favorite things in No Man's Sky just these amazing views where I am on top of the planet, I'm above the clouds, I'm actually in space, and I can see other planets over here. You know, look at that blue and red platter, uh, planet with a ring. And there's other amazing things out here for us to look at. There's some, you know, asteroids that we can fire at. And it's telling us that we've achieved orbital flight and it's giving us tips on how to fly so it's saying test your boost with circle which we can here we go and then um they want us to test our pulse engine by holding l1 and r1 now there's another planet over there i can do that i can do exactly what they're saying um but i kind of want to see if i can find where they want us to go for the quest now look you, you see if I am close enough to the planet and I'm pointed at it, you could see, okay, you're on Hyper V11. We discovered this, and it tells you how far away it is, how long it'll take you to get there um, at your current speed, and, you know, what's on this planet. Now, I can actually go in here. Uh, actually, no, let's go into my galaxy map. And this is where we are in the system that we are uh, chilling in right now. And you can move around to another system but we don't have a hyperdrive so we can't do that but you could see from this view how many planets are in this system that we find ourselves in so there's the planet we just explored plus it looks like there's three other planets now i'm in this section and i can push triangle to expand the inf information about it to see the who's the dominant race you know um what's the economy like and what's the conflict level like now i'm gonna just push circle to uh, minimize some of the information, and then you can just push options or start to get out of that. Now, I arrived at the galaxy map by pushing down on the directional pad and clicking on this spiral galaxy icon to kind of look at that. But for now, I'm not too interested in that. I'm going to push start and go to discoveries instead. And from this screen, you know, I can say, hey, we discovered this system, so I'm going to just push triangle or hold triangle on that, and I'm going to rename the system, and we're going to call it um, Incompetent System. And this way, we just know where we started. You know, I like to kind of know, like, where I began. You might never return here, but it's fun, and we get some nanites for doing it. And then we can rename the planet that we started on, and we will do that too. We're just going to call it um, Incompetent Starter world there we go and we got some nanites for doing that and from this screen as well like the galaxy map you could see and it looks like there's actually four other planets here so there's a couple of small planets the large planet we can see with the ring and then this planet over here so once we start exploring we can populate these and we do that by landing on the planets so it wants us to test the engine so why don't we just aim at this planet right here? Looks like a moon. And I'm going to kind of just aim right at it, and I'm going to hold L1 and R1. And you can see it's going to say engaging pulse drive, and it's going to tick that down. This is the fastest way for us to travel. And I'm going to push L3 to scan the unknown planet. And we're getting communicated. So I push down and click on the uh, Starship communicator and see what's going on. So basically all that quest wants you to do is start uh, your pulse engine and, you know, test your space controls and then you're going to get this transmission. Now, like I said, you can ignore this stuff. You can just be like, no, thank you. I'll do this later and just explore and have fun with the game and do that for forever if you want. I recommend doing a lot of these quests up front, at least for a while, so that you can get technology and access and learn to play 
and then explore with more tools at your disposal. So the incoming transmission, source 4925B, please identify yourself. I'm, and then you can either identify yourself or listen. I'm too honest, so I will identify myself. You are not alone. Follow the, the broadcast ends as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. Input the data. So we have now actually been able to, by scanning, getting close enough to this planet. It's called Toino Omega, which is unmapped. Um, and it's a desert planet. And we can get there in 50 hours at this rate. Or uh, is that 50 minutes? No, yeah, it's 50 minutes. Too long, but if you pulse engine, you'll get there. It's got cactus, copper, pyrite, magnetized ferrite. Very good. But this isn't where we need to go for the quest. It says follow the coordinates. So what you want to do is target where it's telling us to go. And it actually wants us to go back to our starter world, but at a different location. So this is a very useful technique for traveling great distances on a planet, is to jump out into orbit and then use your pulse engine. The pulse engine, when you hold L1 and R1, you go super fast. You cannot use that when you are uh, close within orbit of a planet, basically. Like, if you're within the atmosphere, if you're within the orbit of the planet, you cannot do the pulse engine. So you have to kind of go far enough outside um, to do this. So I'm going to just point right at it and then use the pulse engine. What you want to do is just get that icon that you're trying to get to right in the center of your screen. You could see it says pulse drive active, and it says I have 38, 37% in the center of my ship's display. Um, but as we go faster and faster, we're going to start to approach this, and then it says pulse engine disengaged because we're in suborbital flight. So if you're within orbit, if you're suborbit, it won't let you use it anymore. But you could still hold R2 and circle to go even faster, and just keep your cursor or your center reticule pointed at this signal source. And you will start to get closer. You see the time ticking down. We're getting closer, closer, closer. I'm going to hold off of circle, and then I'm going to start pushing L2 to stop. So we are really, really close to where they want us to go. We're not there yet, um, but you can push, you can hold L2 uh, to, to slow yourself down. And then uh, this looks like it might be over this ridge, perhaps. I'm going to kind of try to point myself at this, and I'm going to land. So all you have to do to land, it's amazing it has an auto land, just push square. If you can land, it will land. If you're going too fast, it'll tell you, or if there's no landing path, it'll tell you. But you just push square, and you just land wherever, and your ship is safely landed. And then you push square to, again to get out. Now, we can't take off again because uh, we need some fuel. And it says, okay, the reason we couldn't specifically pinpoint where the quest wanted us to go is because we need to do a target sweep. So they're telling us how to do a target sweep. So we need to hold the analysis visor, which is L2, and then normally you're on analysis mode, this kind of purpley screen where you're like scanning new um, flora and fauna on the world, minerals, elements, things like that. But if you push right on the directional pad, you go to target sweep mode, and you see how there's a center, and then it says follow the directional indicators to locate the source signal. You see how it's blinking on the right? You just keep moving your view over to the right, and then when you line it up, the four corners, it says target aligned, it says that's good, and then um, we have a good idea and where we should go, and it says estimated distance, deploy marker beacon. So I'm going to push square to put a beacon down, and unfortunately, the beacon is, like, right in front of us. So that's not exactly what we meant to do. Um, so we need to scan again. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get rid of this beacon. Yeah. So aim at the beacon and then just push square again. And then we're not at the place. It says estimated distance. We're going to keep just moving this way. 
until the estimated distance closes, if that's possible. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to do some other stuff. So here's some ferrite dust. We haven't analyzed this. So I'm just going to kind of switch back to my analysis mode. I'm going to scan this big thing with, like, starfish on it. It's called Umuite, which is awesome. And I'm going to blast this thing up and get some dust. You never know when you'll need some. It also has dihydrogen as its secondary uh, element or resource, so that's beautiful. There is a kind of crash pod right here, um, and it's damaged machinery. I'm just going to uh, pick up this goo and put it in my exosuit, and we get ourselves some uh, nanites, which is amazing. You will be happy to have nanites. That animal right there, we've already seen it. It has the green paw, so it's not a new one for us. But that's something I like to do as well, just as a tip. If I'm trying to discover all of the animals on the planet, sometimes I'll just fly my ship up above the planet, above orbit like we saw, and then I'll just use Pulse Engine to kind of go around to another portion of the planet and then land there in a completely new area that's far away from where I was at and see if I can find the animal, you know, see if I can figure out where they are. Sometimes they're underground, sometimes they're in water, you know, things like this. But anyway, um, I need to get pulse engine fuel for um, my pulse engine we can charge, but I also need thruster fuel for taking off with my ship. So let's talk about that. If I push the center button, I go to my starship, you could see that my launch thruster is empty. And you can just see if I push X to try to charge it, it needs Starship launch fuel or uranium to charge it. And then our pulse engine needs tritium or pyrite. Well, luckily, we have a bunch of tritium on our ship already, uh, so we can easily charge this up. I can actually just pick up this tritium and then just drop it onto my um, pulse engine to almost completely recharge it. Our shield is at full strength, but it can actually be recharged with sodium. Huh, it used to be recharged with uh, ferrite, I feel like, at one point. Or, but anyway, now it's sodium for that. And if we want to make Starship launch fuel, which we do, uh, we're going to need some dihydrogen, which is right here. This stuff is all over the place. We can, of course, scan for it if we really, really want to find it. And then I'm going to go into my own inventory. And I'm going to just click on an empty space. And we need to make launch fuel. So I can uh, push square to visualize the crafting steps for this to get a cool screen. And it says to get this, we need ferrite dust to turn into a metal plate, and then we need 40 dihydrogen. And that's it. So that's pretty simple for us. We've got enough dihydrogen now, um, easily. And now we just need some ferrite dust. So all of these rocks uh, should just give us ferrite dust so we can go ahead and blast this up. Remember, keep track of your mining beam. Now, our mining beam is getting low. I'm just going to push down on the directional pad, click Recharge Equipment, click X for the mining beam, and I'm just going to give it all this condensed carbon. And you can see it's at 100%. It's, the mining beam is super easy to recharge. It's great. You just need carbon. Condensed arbon, uh, carbon is much stronger than uh, regular carbon, so it you know recharges more efficiently. Uh, but you have to process usually to get it unless you find it in chests and stuff like that generally. And I'm just going to go ahead picking up ferrite dust, blowing up these rocks. And I think we might have enough now. Let's go ahead and look at push X. And uh, we need a metal plate first, so we'll just go ahead and build a metal plate. And then now I could come in and make Starship launch fuel. I'm going to build it. And I'm just going to pick it up. And then while I have, I push X and I've picked up this launch fuel, I'm going to push R1 to go over to the Starship tab. I'm just going to drop that onto our launch engine, and now we have 100%. And we're ready to go. Uh, depending on what mode you're in, every time you take off, I think it uses a percentage of your fuel. And I'm going to use the target sweep. And we need to go which way? This way. So I'm going to kind of like deploy a beacon um, way, way over here just to give myself a sense of direction. And I'm going to get inside my ship. And let's see how much of our thruster we use. I'm going to just take off. And yeah, you use 25% per launch. So I'm going to move this way. 
because it, it's telling me to go this way for the scan. And I'm just going to move a little bit closer. And here's a campsite. Let's just kind of see what this is all about. Uh, I'm going to land my ship right here. I call this a campsite anyway. It's a space campsite. It's like a place where um, either somebody landed a while ago uh, or somebody crashed or supplies were sent here. And uh, we know what this animal is. It's running away from us, terrified. But let's see. This is where they want us to go. Perfect. Hello. And it says feed with creature pellets, by the way. Uh, you can go into your inventory and you could try to craft creature pellets. Oh, no, we can't do that right now. Or wait. Let me look at my exosuit. No, we don't have the, we don't have the means just yet. At least, I think that's how you do that. Yeah, creature pellet right here. Uh, we don't have bait, so we'll have to figure that out, but we'll get there. Let's go over here to the broken technology, and this is for the quest. Let's fix this, or at least interact with it. The sparking wires of the machine generate a signal, tapping out its broadcast into the world. Whoever left this message is long gone. So for this quest, you're using your beam... Um, your kind of uh, sweep to find a location or at least get the general sense of the direction to go once they tell you where to land. And you're looking for, at least I believe so, one of these damaged machinery, but by uh, a little bit of a campsite, which I'll show you in a second. I'm going to decipher the signal, and it's decoding it. 16, 16, 16 curly brackets. Uh, no fuel, failed to reach station, hazard protection low, no choice but to underground, deployed base computer. As well as the log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. And this is why you want to do the quest. You want a base computer so you can build a base, and you want a terrain manipulator because it's awesome. This, the terrain manipulator and the base, for that matter, these were both not in the game when it launched, and they are just unbelievable additions to the game. You'll see. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. So let's extract the plans. And now we can build a base computer with chromatic metal. I'm going to push return. And we can also build a terrain manipulator with carbon nanotubes and dihydrogen jelly. Easy as pie. So, uh, the terrain manipulator, you could just push start while it's telling you about it. This thing is insane. And so, it goes on your multi-tool and upgrades it. So, you can basically um, dig through material with it. You can dig through the ground and make tunnels. Or, you can create materials and build mountains. Uh, you know, build archways, build tunnels. It's so fun uh, to mess around with. You can build yourself a shelter from a storm. It's an incredible tool, and it makes everything uh, better about exploration. And in fact, it's necessary uh, most of the time for finding the buried technology modules and other things. So it's super good. We definitely want this. And we're going to build, get access to both of these things. Now, this is what I mean by a campsite. Usually, with a campsite, you'll find some lights that have been deployed. They may be knocked over, but in this case, they're here. Somebody's banner or regalia uh, to mark the spot. And there will be a save and chart, like a save station. So you hold square by this thing, and you'll see it running, and it starts to spin. And it says, this is the Dacun encampment, and you discovered this. So this saves the game when you use it, and you get navigation data and nanites for discovering it. In fact, if I push start and I go over to discovery tab, you'll see that on the incompetent starter world, I have now discovered a waypoint. It's, it says right here. Um, and we can rename this if we want, hold triangle, and we can call this, um, you know, the incompetent waypoint one. This is our first waypoint that we found. And these are great for just marking your territory, remembering where you've been on a planet. Plus, they give you um, resources, nanites, and things like that. So I'm going to push space, and I'm just going to go one, done just like that and we get three neonite clusters just for doing it and I'm going to push circle to get out of this and let's just open all of these containers 
see if there's anything good here. There's some sodium nitrate. See, these are great because you can get some like more advanced. There's life support gel. That's great. And let's just go ahead and take this metal. Push X, push triangle. And we got some more life support gel. Now, life support gel is something that we can actually use to recharge our life support. If I push down and I go over to uh, recharge equipment and I go to life support, push X on this, I can use oxygen or I can use life support gel. And I'm going to um, not use either right now because it's not low enough, but I love using life support gel when I have it to save oxygen because I might want that for crafting. So it says select terrain man manipulation mission in the log and uh, we're going to do that. So we're going to go push start. We're going to go to the log. And we have some secondary missions now. I'm going to select this. And it says, construct and master the terrain manipulator. The terrain manipulator is an advanced multi-tool attachment that allows the user to tunnel through the ground. The terrain manipulator is charged with metallic elements. More advanced metals give greater charge. By default, the terrain manipulator will destroy the ground when fired. Use the quick menu to change to advanced editing mode and enable construction options. So we'll look at that when we build it. But to build it, we need to get dihydrogen jelly and carbon nanotubes. So those are easy as pie. Um, this is now going to get uh, kind of pinned for us. I push circle, and you can see in the bottom right, it's telling us to do this. So I'm going to open our inventory, and it wants us to kind of put this right here. And I'm going to just say build it, but and we can map out that we want to build it, but we don't have what we need. We need dihydrogen jelly and... Uh, they want us to locate it with the scanner, so let's see. H is what, of course, we're looking for, and we can see it all over the place. I'm just going to run. I'm going to use our Superman ability to kind of get over here, and there's a, just a big section of nanotubes here. Or, I'm sorry, dihydrogen crystal. Oh, we got a crystal fragment as well. I'll sh show you that. That goes into our inventory. Blast these. Pick up a bunch. And um, it's telling us in the bottom right that we got a crystal fragment, and it's giving us a little quest that says analyze it. So we can go into our inventory. Here's the crystal fragment. Uh, it looks like this. It stacks to 50, and if you just hold square and analyze it, you'll get something from it. Uh, looks like we got like 68 dihydrogen from the crystal fragment. So we just got a bunch of extra stuff, which is awesome. And we're going to go here and craft dihydrogen jelly. So now we have that, and we need to make carbon nanotubes. So to make carbon nanotubes, of course, we're just looking for carbon. Now we know these egg guys give us carbon, so let's just blast these apart. Anything at all that wants to give us carbon, we're going to do that. Our toxic protection is an issue, but remember, we could spend our um, nitrogen to... Uh, recharge it you know or our sodium rather uh, we actually have sodium nitrate is what I meant to say we could use that to recharge it we could just drop this on our hazard protection um, use the sodium to recharge or the sodium nitrate but what I'd like to do these big ones these big dihydrogen crystals we cannot get until we get the advanced mining crystal or laser um, what I like to do is just go back into our ship so instead of like spending resources to recharge i just like to run back in the ship Ooh, look at that right there let's go explore that when i first started playing this item right here was my favorite thing in the game these are called knowledge stones and you can hold square on these memory of the viking and it says terpang 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 yig 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 the stone resonates, producing a sound that fills my mind. A vision begins to take shape. I see two large aliens locked in combat. Eventually, one triumphs, leaving their victim to bleed to death. With the last of their strength, the vanquished alien gestures toward me. Accept the knowledge. The name Viking floats in my vision, an echo of the strange vision I just experienced. A word in this alien tongue is seared into my brain. So we just learned the word Viking. So these knowledge stones, you look at these and you interact with them, you find them all over the planet. In fact, if I use my scanner, you can see them right there as the icon for a knowledge stone. You can tag it, you can go get more. 
they teach you one new word every time from an alien language. It's always going to be a new word. It didn't used to be the case. It was terrible, uh, but now it does. And it's going to teach you a word from the alien species that controls the system that you're in. So, like, we're in a Viking system, so we're going to learn Viking words. Uh, we know this animal. Okay. So we need to make carbon nanotubes, so we'll do that in a moment. Let me just get some more. So I love learning that. It allows you to interact with aliens. Like, when you try to talk to them, only the words that you know or that your translator provides will show up, as, and it's hard to communicate. But as you learn more and more words, you can start to uh, really, really converse. And the reason, one of the reasons, I'm going to make one nanotube here, and if I want to make another one, um, craft more... I just can hold square over the icon that I've already built to craft more. Now, I'm going to get back to my ship because you can see our, our protection is falling. I'm going to run here. I'm going to use my Superman ability. And we're going to just keep running. And the green dudes are chilling. And we get in. And we're good. So now we have enough to make... Uh, we're going to go to our multi-tool, and um, I'm going to install the technology for the terrain manipulator. By the way, you can click on this to make other stuff. If you want to make a bolt caster or you want to make a personal force field, you can, you know, just try to map these in here. Like, I can just put this here, but I don't have um, the chromatic metal just yet. And I'm going to go ahead and just install it, and I'm going to click on this and click on this, and we've got it. The terrain manipulator has now been installed, and I'm just going to push start to leave, and we did this. And what does this mean? Well, check this out. I'm going to push square to leave, and it sh will probably tell me about the terrain manipulator. Um, and it says, activate the terrain manipulator with triangle. So once you have it, you can push triangle to change in the upper right. Look at this. I'm on my mining beam, 64%. And it says, switch triangle. Now I'm in man my manipulator. I'm back to mining beam. Now, from the manipulator, um, you can change its mode. Right now, I'm on mining. I can push circle to go to create, and then I can push circle again to go to flatten, and I can push circle to go to restore, and all of these have different functions that you can just play with. But for example, right now, mining, I'm just going to look at the ground right here, and I'm just going to shoot in and look at this. I can just dig a tunnel. I'm just holding it down. The manipulator is amazing because it never overheats. So you never have to let go of this until it runs out. And they tell you that recharging it is difficult. Like if they go to, like you, you need metals and rarer metals and stuff like that. You can recharge the terrain manipulator with the silicon powder that you're getting. Um, so for example, this right here, this silicate powder, I can just pick this up. I can go over to my multi-tool and I can just drop this and charge my terrain manipulator so it's so easy to charge it because you get tons of this silicate powder just by using the terrain manipulator now that's digging but watch what else you can do with this i'm going to push circle and i'm going to go to create and when you're in create you can say you can do you want to make um a base do you want to make a rock do you want to make um you know what what are you looking to try to make a cave-like interior you can change um the terrain type you can change the material type. You can change the size of it. You can change the shape of it. I'm just going to push um, circle, and I'm going to go back to uh, create. And it says hold R2 to draw large shapes. So check this out. I am holding this, and I can just start to build, and I am making whatever I want. Like I said, I'm making an archway. And this archway, you see, it provides a roof that actually will, if I make this large enough, provide shelter from, um, you know, a, a hazardous storm. Now, I can push L1 and R1. You see this square getting bigger and bigger. Um, I can make it larger, bigger, and I can also push square to change the shape. I had a square. I have a circle. I could change the material if I want to make it look like rock, and then we can um, just make some rock. And we can kind of stack this on top. It's not the easiest thing to always use. But I'm going to just keep making this tunnel right here. 
and we're going to just kind of blast this out. This is not really something that you need to do right now, by the way. It's just something fun to play with. But it's... Look at this. I have now built um, a little cave that we can go into. And you see how it says toxicity level stabilizing? That's how you know... I'm going to um, switch this to create. When it says that... I'm going to mine right here, actually. Mine all of this. Not mine. I'm sorry. Create. There we go. I'm going to push circle. Whenever the game says toxicity level stabilizing or whatever it is for the hazard, temperature level stabilizing, whatever, now I'm going to go to uh, push triangle and just go back to my mining beam. That's when you know that you're inside. So right here, if I come outside, you can start to see the down arrow on my hazard protection. But then if I go under this arch that I built, you could see the down arrow disappears and it says toxicity level stabilizing. So that's a great way to just get out of a storm or give yourself some shelter now it says habitat program initializing they want us to gather copper to make uh so we can make chromatic metal eventually to create the base computer so i'm going to use the tr the analysis visor and they want us to look for deposits so deposits look like this it is a white diamond with this kind of um cross-sectioned square that's you know got like a plus sign through it basically it's been divided into four pieces so that's what you're looking for now that's sodium we don't want sodium we're looking for copper that's copper so i'm just going to hold square to tag it now you could see i that copper deposit is on my map it's 663 units away that's far uh, or at least far enough so that i want to use my ship i'm going to take off and i'm going to try to get back to where we have labeled now there it is right there. So I'm just going to aim my ship at this copper deposit, and I'm going to just hold R2 to fly to it. Oh, there's a knowledge stone right there as well. Oh, no, that's not a knowledge stone. That's even better. There's a knowledge stone. All right, I'm going to just land right here. Push square to land. Push square to get out. And then check this out. We have a copper deposit. So it's very easy to see these... Uh, metal deposits most of the time and this we just need to acquire but instead of using our mining beam like if i use my mining beam i won't be able to get it you need to use the terrain manipulator so you have to push triangle to get to the terrain manipulator be on mining mode and then just hold down r2 and start vacuuming up this copper i love to just run in a circle around it remember this manipulator does not overheat so you can just be blasting away just aim at this, and anything that looks shiny, like the metal you're going for, get it. Look at this. We already have a ton of copper. It's not indefinite. This, We will you know, eventually exhaust this node, but they're all over the planet. So this is an easy way for us to get uh, a valuable metal like copper that we can process. And so I'm just gathering a ton. You can see the power on my terrain manipulator is going down but i just don't care because um i can recharge it with the silicate powder anytime i miss anytime i'm hitting just the dirt as it looks like i'm just getting silicate powder which i can use uh to replenish this and silicate powder we can use uh to build things you know whenever you're using the terrain manipulator to create you are using its energy to make stuff so that requires recharging eventually and well, silicate powder can give you that. So at this point, I've gathered most of the copper. You can see right here. By the way, there's really no gravity with these um, mineral nodes or these metal nodes. Like, you can have copper just floating in the air like this and then just blast it. It does not fall to the ground. There you go. That's a bunch. Now, let's go over and look at this thing. I thought this was a knowledge stone. It's kind of like that, but it's even larger. It's a big monolith to something let's see this is a fragment of ikean plaque i'm gonna hold square and it says the imprint of an ancient civilization was once absorbed by this strange marker the story of the viking somehow spills out in the language of my own people the noble travelers will be spared their journey through the cosmos shall not be thwarted so it is decreed the will of Herc commands it. The Viking shall honor the judgment and the belief of the ancients. All right. So 
You can do a couple of things here. You can seek help with language, seek knowledge of the past, or leave. Now, I want help with language because I can't speak hardly anything, so I'm going to ask for that. And my knowledge of the Viking increases, and we learn the word interloper. So there we go. And we're getting some titles and achievements for doing this. And now they want us to process the copper into chromatic metal. So we're going to need to use um, our refinery. So I'm just going to kind of run over here by our ship. I'm going to push up. And um, remember we made the portable refiner before. I'm just going to select it by moving the cursor over, pushing X. And then I'm going to just deploy this. Uh, right here by pushing R2, and it's down, and I'm going to hold square to use it. It needs fuel, remember, and it takes, I'm going to give it condensed carbon, and for the input, we're just going to give it a bunch of copper so that we can make chromatic metal. I'm going to input this, and we can process, and you can see right here, um, let's see, it's a 2 to 1 ratio, so we can... Um, ch change this into 292 chromatic metal. And I'm just going to hold square and say just begin. You can see it's actually going to take about two minutes to process all of this chromatic metal. So I'm just going to push circle and get out of this. And while that's processing, I know I saw a knowledge stone. There it is. It's over here. I'm just going to run over to this and gather it. Oh, there's something right there, too. You can see that this is a um, heplatoid wheat. So I can go over to this big wheat thing and just hold square to collect that and if you look in our inventory at, at this um you see how its value is four thousand units um these are worth a lot now this salvage data that we got this is worth a ton early game it's a fantastic way to make money if you need it which is just looking for buried treasure is what i call it buried salvaged data and if you're interested in looking for buried salvage data hold l2 and salvage data um, that's a buried cache, okay, but salvage data looks like this, uh, the buried technology module. It kind of has the, uh, like, Wi-Fi symbol at the bottom of the ribbon right there. And now that you have the terrain manipulator and can mine, you can go gather that. You can just go kind of dig your way toward that and find these. And you can use these. We'll see at the base how to use them. But you can also just sell those, um salvage data for a ton but we need to find a place to sell them before we can do that anyway we're at 82 percent right now let's just see if there's anything else interesting i'm just holding um l2 right now just to scan around yep there's the plaque we already found that and there is some ammonia over there if we want that oh there's a humming sack oh uh, we could gather that if we wanted it's in this cave, most probably. And let's just go back and take our chromatic metal. Hey, are you done yet? You are. I'm going to hold square, and we're just going to kind of um, pick this up. I'm going to push X. I'm going to put it in my exosuit. We're good. And then I'm going to actually just gather up my refiner by holding R3. Uh, the carbon goes in. You notice how it converted the condensed carbon into just regular carbon when it put it back? Sometimes it'll do that. And that's fine. And I'm going to hop in our vehicle, and we're ready to make a base computer. So it says find a suitable area and deploy the base computer. Now, putting down your base is not as big of a decision as it seems because you can just build a new base when you're ready to. And I don't want to build a base on this planet because it's got a hazardous environment. I like to have a base on a planet that I don't have to worry about hazard protection, but it's not always easy to find that. However, we'll get into that next time because we've covered so much ground already. We've proceeded with the quest. We now have the terrain manipulator. We've learned how to mine metal. We've learned how to create. Uh, we've recharged our launch thrusters. We've recharged our pulse engine, learned how to use that. Ooh, look at those giant ships popping into, uh, you know, space right there. It's so awesome to see that. And there's still so much more to talk about in this game. But it's so fantastic, and I hope you're learning from this series and you're having fun with it. And if you have any comments you'd like to share to help new players, please put those down below. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, I'd love to help you with as well. Take care, everybody.